JD, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm here. I'm good. I'm ready to go. Awesome. Well, we are rocking and rolling and we are live and recording and everything. And so um, if you're not live with us, we do this live every month. And so make sure to join us for one of these. These are fun. We can kind of do Q&A live. So we're going to be talking uh, about some fun stuff. I love this topic personally, and I know I think it's valuable for many of our audience. We're going to be talking about, you know, some some big tools and opportunities for physicians to kind of leverage what's out there to help ideally provide more branding for themselves and, you know, turn the corner in the healthcare system. The healthcare system is messed up. And we've kind of talked a lot about that on the podcast. And there's a lot of opportunities out there. There's a lot of conversations going on. There's a lot of communities building up. And so that's what we're going to talk about today with JD. JD is an expert at LinkedIn and branding. And so before we jump into all he has to share with LinkedIn, I would love it if we could kind of talk a little bit about JD. JD, tell us a little bit about you and how, how did you get into this world of like specializing in LinkedIn and particularly with the healthcare industry? I thought you were going to mention, Daniel, how did I specifically get here on this podcast? Literally. What has brought me here was yeah. really an extension of my, my origin story. So, uh, I think to come full circle with this and make it really customizable for a physician, uh, I was groomed to be a doctor from a very early age. I grew up in a scientific and an artistic household. Both my parents were scientists and artists. And my father was one of the most prolific medical researchers in the world. But I've always had that, that scientific sense and uh, brought that into the business world, into the marketing arena. And when I saw LinkedIn in 2006, uh, I was smitten, it was love at first sight, and transitioned my marketing consultancy to LinkedIn. And for so many years, the doctors had abstained from LinkedIn. They were few and far between. And I am uniquely positioned to help them, guide them, because I wouldn't say that I've walked in their shoes, but I've walked in their booties. They understand what they're going through. Why were physicians slow to, or why have physicians been slow to kind of jump on board with the whole LinkedIn or just maybe social media in general game? I don't think it was their focus, Daniel. They were they were focused on getting out of medical school, doing their residency uh, and all their rotations, and then settling into a, a very stable area of practice where they could pay back their loans and be, and deliver the, the best patient care that they knew how to. And mm. social media wasn't their focus in general. And I don't think doctors were, were all that eager to get on social media and tout themselves. Uh, there were uh, there were entities that were rating physicians in the marketplace. You could get on and check the, the credentials and qualifications of a physician who were uh, contemplating a, a visit. And they weren't writing content. They weren't interested in building networks. They were just going into a, a clinic every day. I was talking with a physician the other day, and they were describing this particular person I was talking with has a direct mm -hmm. specialty care practice. In other words, he's kind of like disassociated with the system. I'm like, he doesn't do insurance. He doesn't do hospital. He's just patients pay him directly. So mm -hmm. anyway, this particular physician was talking about how when he used to be in the system, I'm going to use air quotes for the system. He was so full and had just this onslaught of patients and he really had no need whatsoever to brand. And it was almost like he's, he said he wanted to do the reverse. He was like, slow down the, this influx. I already have too many patients. I can't see. He said that's partly why he didn't brand at all. He, he almost kind of took himself off of the internet. I don't know if that's been partially the case. Has that been your observation in cases? I have noticed that many of my classmates from Chicago Medical School do not have a, a even a baseline media presence. And I've looked for them. I've tried to reconnect with some of them, haven't been able to find them. But to your point, I think they've kind of recollected and reconvened on LinkedIn. LinkedIn has become that place, that destination for physicians, because as you know, with, with the system the way it is, many are, uh, are looking outside of medicine. Uh, they felt that they've done enough, had enough. They, they now want to follow their muse and, and execute their passion projects or side hustles. LinkedIn has kind of become that medium to absorb uh, a, a lot of that interest and in connecting. Yeah. So for those of you guys that are just joining us, I'm, I'm talking to JD, 
JD is the uh, is an expert at LinkedIn and branding for physicians, and so we're getting into kind of some of the the reasoning, you know, maybe why physicians have not been as involved in LinkedIn, and uh, you know, there's a lot of different theories, but I think that's been pretty well known is that there's not been a lot of, you know, I work with physicians all day long, and I would say the minority of my colleague friends and clients even on LinkedIn, even now today, like most of my buddies that are physicians and clients are not currently active like today still on LinkedIn. And so I think, but now JD, you mentioned the word like side hustles and there's these trends now developed in medicine. And I think it's partly going back to the system being a mess, like the healthcare system is a mess. And so there's also these trends developing in healthcare and particularly with physicians is like, I need to get into a side hustle. I need to do passive income. You can see it with like the explosion of Facebook groups. There's been these monster Facebook groups that have just exploded in the physician circles around these topics. And I think they kind of revolve around like helping to solve or get away from some of these healthcare issues that are causing problems for them. But it it seems like that kind of goes hand in hand with their potential interest to get back in involved in LinkedIn. Like this, if I want to get into a side hustle, that kind of starts to push you down this road of like, maybe I need to put my name out there, right? I mean, maybe I need to build a brand or... Well, I think we're seeing a lot of physicians elevate their profiles. There's no question about it. I I think that that has been a a nice byproduct of of the pandemic. It has kind of forced us to reconcile the value we bring as professionals. Uh, I think it's given physicians a certain autonomy. They, They have been under the gun, under the microscope, no pun intended, and and they have been tagged and compressed by the system. And many of them now are are liberating themselves. We're, we're seeing the rise of the of physician leader, mm-hmm. people who are leaving medicine to to work on medical path and just kind of be their own boss for a while and not have to feel so overburdened by a healthcare system that has it's really showing its vulnerability right now. Mm-hmm. And, and they're showing their human side, basically. LinkedIn is a very humanized medium, and they're out there as business people, professionals, but they're also showing their, their delicate underbellies now. And I, for one, I appreciate that, and I applaud it, because for, for so long, they had to be leaders. They had to be certain types. They had to go in there, into the exam rooms, and, and listen, and be compassionate. And whereas they still retain that empathy, they're channeling it in other way in the business world. Mm-hmm. It's nice to see, to be honest. With you. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. I think, though, before we dig too far into LinkedIn, it might be helpful to talk about like why LinkedIn, like why social media, like why should a physician? I know physicians are busy, and all of us are so busy, and it's like got a million things going on. So, why should I be as a physician having a LinkedIn profile versus having Facebook book versus not doing anything at all? Well, for any business person, it's at this stage of the game to not have a LinkedIn profile and be in the business universe is a bit of a red flag. And based on LinkedIn's advantageous position with Google, the search for a name will immediately give back LinkedIn as top of the page. So we're preconditioned to click on the top of the things in a search and LinkedIn is right there. So the LinkedIn profile can serve as a gateway, whether they're on the corporate site for the medical practice, whether they're other things, whether they are medical advisors at companies, whatever the case may be, wherever their bios exist, LinkedIn will bubble up to the top of those. So the search engine optimization aspect of LinkedIn. The business case for LinkedIn becomes important because once people get to a page, they can research the doctor. They can see what he looks like or she looks like. They can see what their background is like, where they trained, where they were educated what kinds of things they're doing in medicine and and maybe some of the things they've done outside. And we mm-hmm. slowly but surely see doctors adding those little elements to their profiles about things they're doing outside of practice, whether they're being taken on as medical advisors, consultants, backups, whether they are guesting on, say, CNN as a medical expert uh, in some kind of disease or, or condition comes up. So they're doing all sorts of things. And LinkedIn, again, has become this, this marketing for them to communicate. So the business case for LinkedIn is becoming more obvious to doctors. They're figuring it out. They know they should be on there. But again, to your point, they have to use it. They can't just be a profile sitting out there. But they really do have to leverage the interactive space with force 
on the system to create an outcome. Yeah, and I, I don't know how much awareness there is of how LinkedIn works versus, I mean, I kind of think of it as like a professional leaned social media platform. And I'm sure everybody listening will have varying levels of understanding of how LinkedIn works and how it compares to other social media. But first of all, I don't think I'm almost like fearful of getting, not fearful, but like I'm cautious about social media. That's how I view it these days. And I think a lot of my generation is a little bit like that. We were early in on, you know, I was in college when Facebook started. And so I experienced it pretty early and have seen it change over the years to the point. So I saw the good side of Facebook where it was just like connecting and friendship and profiles and, you know, sharing pictures and that kind of thing. And then it became like advertising started to get snuck in there. And then everybody, your grandparents were on there and then cat videos. And then all of a sudden the rabbit holes and the algorithms. And it's almost like I have to protect my time from getting onto that social media platform, particularly is LinkedIn in some ways like that, or is it a completely different social media platform? Well, LinkedIn is the most enigmatic of all the platforms. It does share the characteristics of all of the other sites. There is a central core of information, a profile, from which you have these spikes radiate out and these inroads that, that they do the profile. And then there's this interactive space, a homepage, a feed, a wall, Facebook. And whereas they're similar, they all leave off at different points. LinkedIn is around the business position. And ideally, the certain gravity, a certain political correctness to what we post on the site. And people are taking liberties every day on it. It's looking a lot more like Facebook and Instagram and TikTok every day because it's become that kind of, of medium. People are more expressive. They, they are dredging deep. And, and it's almost a kind of, okay, I'm going to put this out. What's the worst that can happen type of approach? So there are people who, are, unfortunately, are doing things that they may think help them, but are militating against them. But for the most part, people who are out there creating and distributing some kind of personal value are leveraging these sites. Yeah. And, and so going back to the healthcare challenges that are out there, I think I was look, I saw an example of this the other day of someone on LinkedIn. They were talking about I don't know if they worded it this way, but it was basically moral injury. So they were describing a lot of different stories or experiences of these conflicts that they're facing in healthcare or in their practice and how insanely like challenging they are and not in the interest of the patient. In other words, like it's causing these patients to get like not the best care possible. And they're sharing all these stories that are real life, or it seems that they're real life stories or of these patients that are interactions that they're having where it's like, basically the patients are not getting the best care possible or the costs are way higher than they need to be because of all these problems in healthcare. And the physicians are put in this position of having to like make these decisions that conflict with their morals. And that's where the moral injury comes into play. So they're telling yeah. these stories that are like painting the picture of this whole moral injury thing as opposed to this whole burnout idea, which I think is incredibly valuable. It's also people resonate with it. A lot of people, it's very active. This phys particular physician has a very active, involved following. And this is just one example that comes to mind. To your point, doctors are getting more open and transparent about the medical field. And I've been seeing that as well. I, uh, burnout is rampant in the medical profession. It's costing companies thousands, I'm sorry, millions of dollars. In fact, billions of dollars at this stage globally, employee burnout, but it, we don't want to hear about it in the medical profession. We don't like to think of our, of our patients as being burned out or getting a little bit too expository about certain patient dynamics. So the, the medical profession has to, I believe, maintain a certain sense of guardedness. But burnout is so rampant and its effects are devastating and it's dovetailing the whole mental illness conversation right now, which is important and priority one for, for us as a species. So LinkedIn has been there to absorb the shock and they yeah. are more people are being cathartic with it. They're they're letting their true feelings be known. That's a very human movement. And I accept it, but at the same time, I attend to the social science around it. I see physicians as being no different than anyone else prone to the same imposter syndrome behaviors, social comparison bias, anxiety, depression, mood swings. They're not immune. Well, I think when you hear other people share their stories and 
this particular physician is also kind of helping physicians see that it's not burnout is kind of a broad term that they throw out. It's like almost implies like you got issues like and this particular physician is helping to really put a little bit more of a pinpoint yeah. on what that issue is. And it's not so much your issue and it's more this messed up systems issue that's making well, it very challenging, kind of like to... I can't really speak to the burnout issue. I, mm -hmm. I'm not, again, I down those corridors. I don't interface with the technicians. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not squeezed by any kind of system that forces me to be at my best every single minute of the day. But at the same time, I know that it's all about the delivery of quality patient care. And if that suffers, you have to find the, the broken links in the chain, address them, fix them like any mm -hmm. other business. Medicine is a business and and medical practitioners are, are labor now of big companies, many of them. And there's performance reports. And in their case, they're, we, all, we all kind of say, well, it's not life and death, but in, in the medical profession, it is. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a Hippocratic oath and there, there's commitment. And sometimes there's just, there's no room for a diverting attention span, the focus on the patient. So I see this particular person I keep going back to. He's an orthopedic surgeon that's sharing these stories. And I know that there's a lot of like younger, maybe they're in training coming up and coming orthopedic surgeons mm -hmm. that would really latch on to those stories and it potentially would change the direction of their career completely so i'm an example of that like i was in the traditional financial services world for years and years which is this kind of like the traditional healthcare world and that it's like there's a lot of conflicts of interest and it's challenging to navigate and so i started to kind of follow some voices in our industry that were doing it a little differently, including on LinkedIn, and started to kind of latch on to some of the unique ideas they had. And ultimately that changed, completely changed 180 degrees, the direction of my career way for the better. And so I think the same thing is happening. It's the only social media platform I've seen that kind of professional, like community developing is LinkedIn like this. Yeah. Same sort of thing is happening, is starting to see happen in, with physicians. It's like these stories of people that are very admirable, doing it the right way, looking out for the patients, like fighting the good yeah. fight people, and they're sharing their stories. You just have to get on there and go follow them, really. Well, we're also seeing the creation of a huge advocacy system for physicians. You've got physicians coaching physicians, physicians supporting physicians. There are a lot of validation behaviors and support seeking behaviors going on on LinkedIn in any profession right now. We all want to know that we're on the right track and that's the value and purpose and advantage of community. And the doctors are finding theirs and there are more people who are, are holding space for doctors to talk about their issues, to really kind of come clean about what they're feeling and how they can be the best practitioner. And we're talking about physicians that want to stay in medicine and they embrace all that's good about the profession and the field and they, they, they are crusading against the oppressive nature of the system. And then there are folks that are looking elsewhere. They may be keeping a, a foot not so firmly planted in medicine, but they're looking to write books. They're, they're looking to engage companies. They want to do wellness programs for corporations. They want to be media personalities. They want to start podcasts. They want to guest on podcasts. So maybe that's the next wave of medicine where doctors who are leaving the profession are now going out and being advocates for other physicians and also being uh, sources of nurture for young doctors coming into the market. So. The preservation of medicine as the noble profession that it is, is very important. And I know many physicians are taking that role and taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. I hope some of them stay because I need a doctor for my future and my. We all do. <laughs> but I do know a whole lot, a scary large amount of physicians that are working their way out of, out of medicine. And, and we're not talking about like retirement age physicians. Yeah. There's a very large amount of physicians I know that are. Not maybe they're not completely working out of medicine. Maybe they're like slowly getting into side alternative careers. And well, you know, the other downside of that is you've got people who are leaving corporate who are going 
out there becoming consultants and coaches. And sometimes coaches and consultants have kind of had enough of being on their own, so they want to get back into corporate. The beauty about medicine, it's it's always, so we're more nomadic than ever before as professionals. People are leaving great gigs to just go out and do what they feel they were destined to do, mm. doctors included. And ideally, they, they, they are still bringing the mindset of the healer whatever it is they're doing, whether they're teaching, whether they're writing, whether they're giving broadcast. So uh, educating people, making them aware of, of what to expect in, in a medical career. Yeah. I'm in the, of course, in the podcast circles. And so I know a lot of the physicians that have podcasts and it's interesting and maybe it's not so interesting it's maybe common sense that almost all of them have very active linkedin profiles but i think sure. the reason is because they have they're like developing this side revenue stream like alternative business or whatever with the podcast and that linkedin is such a fantastic tool to kind of complement all that well that's where i really have positioned myself as a resource for the medical profession is because i can i can work with a doctor who is affixed to practicing medicine who is very focused on that there's nothing pulling him or her outside but then also the the physician turning entrepreneur the, the physician turning leadership developer these people are feeling inside that they're in a, a state of transition and they they want a an asset like the linkedin profile case those changes and announce those changes. So that's where I've installed myself because I know the vocabulary of medicine. I spent my life growing up in healthcare. I've been talking to doctors since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I, I know what to communicate for purposes of that profile because you certainly don't want to raise eyebrows or ruffle feathers or indicate to an employer that you're ready to bolt. But at the same time, you want to extol your merits, your virtues and the benefits of working with you to stay a company or a growing business to start. Mm -hmm. How does that work? I know it's going to be very personalized to every, everybody's got different yeah. situation, but like, give us a peek into what it looks like to work with someone like you to kind of navigate the world of creating your profile. I've been writing profiles since 2007. It took a couple months before I got that call. And that was the call that changed everything, Daniel. It, AD, how much do you charge to write a LinkedIn profile? And prior to 2006, no one was outsourcing any kind of LinkedIn work, let alone the putting much thought behind their LinkedIn profile. We were a little bit ahead of the personal brand conversation. But but now with so many people who have mobilized around the LinkedIn trade, making it a, a business, it was a cottage industry and now it's a huge hyper-competitive field and a heavily outsourced service is LinkedIn profile writing. So my art and my science in designing these profiles is to really create a real-time snapshot of what the doctor is and, and what the future vision is. Also reaching for the future and maybe leveraging a little aspirational communication. Talk about the things they want to do, they hope and that they feel would be implemented for the greater good. And and we telegraph that if they're comfortable with it. We're casting this wide net as a personal brand so that it's not just about a healthcare provider, it's about being someone who is truly in touch. Yeah, it, it seems like there's a lot more of those active physicians out there, like I talk about, mm -hmm. that have a what I would consider a great profile and they're very active and does it just involve setting up a profile? Like if I say I don't even have LinkedIn or I'm not very active on LinkedIn, do I just need to set up a profile and then kind of like takes five minutes? Well, many people have. Yeah, many people set up their profile and forgot. Don't put a picture on it. <laughs> we have seen the, the visual aesthetic of the LinkedIn profile page heighten through the years. And now we put our own aesthetic onto that page. And yes, it means, of course, having a warm, welcoming professional headshot, using verbiage, installing yourself as a person of impact, person of influence in your field. And that takes a little doing because on the one hand, you don't want to tout yourself over the top. You don't want to go too testimonial, but at the same time, a little bit of, of personal selling, a little bit of personal marketing. We're all marketing ourselves. We are, we are trying to reach the people that we can serve and the people who keep coming back. Patients have the economic value to doctors and to the medical profession. And there's a certain responsibility for doctors to have a presence, maintain that presence, 
can drive a footprint on LinkedIn so that the patients know who they are. We can use my LinkedIn as like a tester LinkedIn. Like I, I have a picture, so that's a good start. And I have connections and it's been around for a while and I haven't had anyone professionally write my LinkedIn profile and I'm sure it has lots of room for improvement. And there's a lot of, I noticed early on in LinkedIn, especially I had a lot of noise in coming through in my feeds and it started to feel like a, a waste of time. And just because of the, all this mess of connections and you want to have more connections because that's always good. But like, what are some tips for like someone that's trying to kind of get past this, that I got it started. Like, I want to get this thing a little bit more efficient. Like, do I accept every connection? Do I comment on every post? Like what, there's a ton of things that, that you can do in LinkedIn. Well, LinkedIn is a multifaceted platform. And whereas I'm not really the tips guy, there, there are plenty of people out there doing tips, but I like to take a look at this from, a, from the overarching perspective of, of making incremental gains. You can't do it all at once. If you stress anybody out, try to configure a LinkedIn profile that really sells them at, in, in real time, it takes a lot of thought, a lot of introspection, a lot of self-assessment to move forward on LinkedIn. Read your profile every day, even if it means adding a sentence, taking out a sentence, kind of plugging and playing a little bit. I think we all have our descriptions that have remained with us throughout our whole careers or how our patients feel about us. I look at what others are doing to a certain point, but I... I self crowdsource. What doesn't feel right to me, I won't put it there in my profile. So the profile is one piece, the social engagement is another piece, and really seeing who inhabits your professional network and moving your mindset from that thematic of a network, which is a bunch of things and thumbnails, to a living, vibrant community. So that's what I try to do is see the person underneath the profile. Yeah, I think you also have to figure out or always be thinking about what value you want to add. And this is a lifelong thing. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> what unique ideas do you have? Do you want to do some public speaking on the side or do you want to shift into a having your own practice? Do you want to create a new way of doing healthcare? Do you want to get into a completely different industry? Like, that's probably the first thing is like, where do you want to take your life professionally, especially like, what do you value professionally? Like, who are the type of people you connect with? That's also another good starting point. I have gotten a lot of traction from LinkedIn by really looking closer at these people that I, like the guy I was describing earlier, the physician, the orthopedic surgeon that has all these great stories, like going onto his profile and looking at the people that are interacting with him, that's a great, or there's a much higher likelihood. They're the type of people that are gonna resonate with what I like in his profile or his interactions, his ideas. Well, that's where we're moving from network to community because we are we are seeing the people underneath and we LinkedIn users have accepted invitations. We have extended invitations. We've built this community, but is it a real community if you don't know who the people are in it? So the more you look at these names, the more you look at these profiles, the more you reach out to people. And the direct messaging portal on LinkedIn is really where the rubber meets the road these days because that's where you really assert force on the system, conversational force on the system. You can't achieve an outcome. You can't impact a decision, inform a decision, unless you, you reach out or you're, you're reacting. Once you get out there in the interactive space, anything can happen. Get mm -hmm. found, get noticed, People might be interested in the services you have, the perspective you bring, and the key is to get them in off LinkedIn conversation, exchange ideas, talk about mutual benefit, creation, co-creation, and then you start to feel that something's really happening. Yeah, it's kind of like finding your tribe. If you find your people, say you're interested in, like I was referring to earlier, like practicing direct care, and you find yeah. people on LinkedIn that are already doing it really well, and you connect with them and then you start to interact with them one-on-one -on -one, like most of the time or they're way more likely to want to really interact with you they're going to love talking about it and love that you're asking them questions about it it's their big idea themselves and they're like oh that's there's some other people that are kind of jumping on to the bandwagon there's a lot of uh, that's like community building you uh, you right really there. start to see 
what's happening in medicine as a microcosm of what's happening in the business world at large too. That's that's all that business people have done on LinkedIn and physicians are, are covering it now and they are exploring ways to build community through LinkedIn engagement. Several of my clients who are prolific speakers and lecturers, lecturers at symposia and they're traveling and they're, they're talking about whether it's physician burnout, whether it's talking about advances in their field, and that's another huge piece of LinkedIn to glorify the career profession through the profiles and talk about being at the forefront of advances in technology, AI, all these exciting things that are playing into the medical field now. But the posts that doctors are putting out there, which are basically for doctors and the communities that they're building, they're starting to take on shelf lives for, for days, not weeks. And they get a lot of and a lot of really great ideas exchanged comment and I study those and I comment where I feel I can where, where I feel it's my sweet spot not just comment for comment sake but that's how you kind of nestle into the psyche people it's kind of buttress in it's what we call propinquity you're kind of sidling up to, to others on LinkedIn and forming parasocial relationships so both parties kind of get the feeling that they know each other somehow just by engaging on it's amazing that's how LinkedIn and all the platforms you get the idea that we really know these by what they're writing and by being on their profiles a few times. And uh, when you build a relationship and work very hard to expand the conversation, that's where things start. And that's where you really get the feeling that no longer a network is community and you're talking M to M, mind to mind, or H to H, human to human. You're talking about some of your clients, and I think stories are really good to, to kind of hear stories of people doing it the right way or seeing positive results. Mm -hmm. Do you have some specific stories, not names and everything, but stories about clients or people you know that have kind of gone through this transition where it's helped them turn the corner? Every physician that I'm working with right now is undergoing some kind of, of transition, and that doesn't mean that they're leaving the profession but they have worked long and hard to get to where they are. And I rally behind them in that respect. I want to tell their story. And I approach them from the viewpoint of a broadcast journalist. I have extensive experience in, in broadcasting and in journalism. I'm, I'm really there to get their story. I'm gonna ask you to predict the future. <laughs> LinkedIn seems to be, uh, I haven't seen the statistics on it, but I remember it not being massively growth, the percentages not huge on number of new users and that kind of thing. And But I just feel that it's much more niche focused and not a great comparison to other social media necessarily. I believe that the clutter is only going to get more intense. LinkedIn is growing at, at, a, at an exponential rate. As we sit here today on February 21st, 2023, it's at about 840 million users. So it's on its way to a billion users. And it, it's absorbing a lot of the overflow from people who have had it with Facebook. There are many people that just have given up on the other platforms. And LinkedIn, to its credit, is the top of the heap. They have spot some of this scrutiny and, and problems that the other sites had. Save for a few security breaches, LinkedIn has withstood every test it's given. So I think that more and more people will activate, more and more people will awaken to creating and distributing content, be more podcasts, more than we could listen to in a hundred lifetimes. There'll be more people who want to guest on podcasts. There'll be more call for physicians in the AI space and technology kind of weaves its way through the metaverse. I think you're going to start to see more and more docs come involved with that. You're going to see more docs looking to each other for support to the rise of the physician coach, the, uh, the, the physician consultant. And they're kind of galvanizing themselves again to this period of incredible, remarkable change. And LinkedIn seems to have kind of flexibility and elasticity and communicate everything that's on the horizon. And that's where I like to be. I'm more of a futurist than I ever was. I really do try to think one, if not two steps ahead. Yeah, I think, and I think health, healthcare is changing a lot and the world physicians work in could very well change a considerable amount in the next 10 or 15 years. There's a lot of problems, but I think the people that at least I follow and see on LinkedIn are talking more about solutions. I mean, they're talking about the problems, 
but they're also coming up with solutions and becoming part of the solution as opposed to like the traditional hospital system is like just not really solvent. I mean, they're not changing much. It's like a very difficult to turn direction in the big monster system of healthcare. Whereas when you look at these individual physicians that are kind of, or even groups that are banding together and communities with all these ideas, they're really... Well, the future and the revenue is in innovation and that innovation more welcome than in medicine. And an individual or a group can come up with an invention, device, a service, an app that saves lives, improves the level of care, unifies families in the face of healthcare crises. I think there are people that wake up every day, adrenalized, accomplish that kind of thing. And I support them, applaud them, and I'm there for them. Yeah, and that's the kind of platform you want to be involved in is if you're trying to work on solutions. I think mm -hmm. that's a difference I noticed too is in any other social media. I don't know. It's not professional. LinkedIn is very professional focused and it's also more entrepreneurial and entrepreneurs are all about identifying problems, but then also solving them. Yes. True. And that Taking is taking risks around them. It's a risk to say, here's the problem. Here's my idea to solve it. And then yeah. you'll put the thing, the thing out there that you're going to do to solve it. That's yeah, scary. And, and it's a risk to walk away from medicine and do that full time. I mean, is a physician willing to exit and forego a $200,000, $250,000 annual salary to toil in anonymity for a while and play on the hope that maybe they can get some funding for a project or the invention of a device? I mean, there, there's a lot associated with entrepreneurship that it can be a very cruel and frightening world, wrought with peaks and valleys and ebbs and flows and sleepless nights and wondering if they're doing the right thing and second guessing themselves, but as opposed to the stability that a medical career does provide. And mm. so the, these docs are taking a huge leap of faith. And in so doing, they become leaders by example. They, they take medicine to almost another plane, another level of greatness and nobility. And that's what I'm, I'm interested to see how that plays out. And LinkedIn is going to play a huge role in that. Yeah. My prediction, if we're going to make predictions about the future, I'll make mine too. My prediction of the future of physicians practices is that there is a bigger shift because lately, or, you know, the past, whatever years, it's been a shift towards physicians working for the hospital systems, no longer being self-employed, but selling their practice to the hospital system or just starting with the hospital system. I think it's going to flip flop completely where physicians are going to go back towards their entrepreneurial, like not necessarily creating this grand, awesome new idea, but just like practicing medicine in their own practice yeah. or maybe disassociating with insurance. That's what direct care is like getting away from the system. People who work in restaurants, they, they're not looking to innovate. They're going in to create the best food they can that day. And they do it the next day and the next day. And that's the heroic food. System. And if you extrapolate that in, into the the world of the physician, the best physicians just go in there every day and they walk down those halls and they see the thing and they're besieged by this rep or that rep during the course of the day. They've got to put up politics of the healthcare system. But you know what? When it's time to dispense healthcare and see a patient and be an active listener, and now we've got telemedicine and be, being diligent on the telemedicine side, wherever it's going to lead, just dispensing good medicine is heroic on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's also worth communicating on a LinkedIn profile. Yeah. We got a question from Ricky. Good to see you here, Ricky. And this is a <laughs> this is a good question. He's asking about LinkedIn potentially being used for evil. He's sharing an example of his buddy who actually took advantage of him. And he's a Northwestern Mutual Financial Advisor and has a fantastic LinkedIn profile. And that's kind of like the corporate, when I was describing the financial world, they're like the corporate system of financial services. So this guy's got a, apparently a great, fantastic LinkedIn profile, but it's allowing him to sell more of this crappy product that he took advantage of him with. Is there any way to like avoid this or limit this negative aspect? There are bad actors everywhere. Yeah, there's a lot of them in this world. I know exactly the world he's talking about because I came from it. 
and there's a large amount of them. It's kind of like the healthcare system. Like there's a lot of problems within that world. And unfortunately they are really good at having fancy LinkedIn profiles. Well, I can't speak to that. I speak to LinkedIn for the greater good. And there are plenty of, plenty of folks out there that pollute, emanate the landscape. I think what you have to do, where there's darkness, you got to shine the light on them. And I think, and that's partly what I've done, because I happen to have worked for this company he's talking about. And I know a lot about this particular use case. And I think the same is true in healthcare. And it goes back to the example I was describing earlier. When you can share the stories, the real stories of why this is such a problem and why it's bad for people and talk about it in a platform, that's where it's at. And you can shine the light on this kind of thing. And so I think yeah. the motivation for me is to like, that's more motivation for me to be loud on LinkedIn, essentially, like to get more involved. Well, it really speaks to the virtue of building a organic, tightly knit, cohesive community, which is what I espouse and, and how I teach LinkedIn. You, we do have the ability to block people if there was a legal issue, if there was anybody that was defamatory or compromising on LinkedIn, those are legal problems that can be reported to LinkedIn. I love best practice. That's my conversation. My conversation is about developing trusted relationships. If there's any hint that the relationship will not bear or hold trust or blossom in any way, disconnect. Get the hell out of there. Life's too short, man. I, I'm out for eliminating any and all toxicities in my life. So it's kind of like you could use the example in healthcare. It's like insurance companies, health insurance companies have really good LinkedIn profiles and put in a, put a lot of like fancy content out there. And I believe that they have a lot of conflicts of interest that sometimes can cause them to do evil things. And so I have much more faith in the physicians themselves and the more involved they can get and put out like really good content and shine the light or share unique stories about why that's a problem and why that's an evil and why the other side of the story, I think that's going to be a big opportunity for something like this is to kind of, cause right now these big insurance companies or the big hospital systems, they have big budgets for this kind of thing, but LinkedIn kind of evens the playing field. Like they allow like the guy, the one person that can speak pretty well and is very educated to compete essentially and potentially get a lot more action than this big, huge monster insurance company that, cause that's the thing I noticed about this, the insurance world, if we're talking about that, their content is terrible. In a lot of cases, it's not any good. It's not very personal at least. And they're the industry that LinkedIn is set up to help the most. And in many cases they restrict them the most, especially if in financial services, if someone is selling investments or servicing in the, in the equity market. LinkedIn is very restrictive. Securities Act of 1940 and FINRA and compliance and all of that. But again, when you're speaking about virtue in LinkedIn, that's that's where you'll find me. I can't speak to the unscrupulous behaviors. I can't stand them. I see so many predatory sales behaviors out there on LinkedIn. Write about them, speak about them. There's no way to avoid it. People are going to do what they're going to do. But mm -hmm. fortunately, you have ways to dim them down, make them fully opaque in your life and operate from a sense of purity, which I think is very important on LinkedIn. Yeah. Well, I know we're getting to time as we're wrapping up. I would love it if you could share more about your work and your business and how, how people can find you. I know, of course, on LinkedIn, he's got a great LinkedIn profile. If you want a great definition of a LinkedIn profile, like just go to JD's profile and like, look at his and you know, that, that, that's a great. Story. You're very kind, Daniel. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> that beaming testimonial. The, the difference between me and any other LinkedIn users, I saw the value of this thing right away. And all I've done since 2006 is communicate that value in one way or another, whether it's through written word, spoken word, through my profile, things that I do on the leader by example. So my, my work today is, is helping good people flourish on LinkedIn, committed people who, who have an idea, who, who have vision, who want to change the world for at the risk of sounding cliche. And many of those people are in medicine. And I've been waiting for the opportunity to work with doctors. And I've been in, in, in the months leading up to our taping here through the pandemic, where I started to see physicians kind of infiltrating LinkedIn. I, did, I designed a proprietary model, extended my methodology to them. Because 
that's that's where I've lived. Lived in the medical profession since I was a kid. But I've never practiced medicine. And I know what's at stake for the docs right now. I know what they want to do. They've got hopes, dreams, ambitions, and I can co-create with them. And that's mm. a huge piece of my work right now, a specialty marketing. Yeah. Well, definitely go ahead and check out JD's LinkedIn profile and, and have a LinkedIn profile. If you're listening to this and you don't have a link, let's, that is an important first step. Let's start with a LinkedIn profile yeah. and then follow JD first. If you don't follow me, follow me for sure. But follow JD. <laughs> follow Daniel and you'll get to me. I'm, I'm basically, I basically hitched my wagon to his star. It will be like second connections and then first connections. And then yeah. that, that'll all work out. Exactly right. Now I want to thank you, Daniel. You kept my head in the game on this and you posted admirably on LinkedIn in the days within our, our taping here. And that was a, a nice use of the site. It remains to be seen. And I don't really pay attention to metrics, to be honest with you. I, I feel that a piece of content like this has, a, 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 has eternal life, depending on how often we, we come back and promote it. So if people didn't see it when it was happening live, we have the ability to get in front of them down the road. And thank you for for the interest. Thank you for veering away from your your world of, of finance and medical practice to, to have little old me on. Oh, no, it was good. It, I've enjoyed our conversation and look forward to staying in touch. JD, as always, a good conversation. Thanks, man. Thanks.